consequences have at least the same symmetries as the causes. That's roughly what Pierre Curie, the Nobel Prize laureate of physics, tells us about symmetries. This principle is very important in physics and can avoid us a lot of calculus. Let's say we have two charged balls with the same charge Q and that we are interested in the electric field they create in some point in the axis of symmetry. Let's name this ball A and this one B. So these are the causes, the presence of two charged balls in the space. The consequence would be the creation of some electric field here. And what the symmetry principle tells us is that if we want to calculate EB, for example, we only need to calculate EA. So if EA is the field created in the, this point M by the charged ball A, we know for sure that EB will be the exact symmetric of EA and M by the axis delta. So if we manage to calculate EA, we don't need to do further calculations to have EB. We only rely on symmetries to have the rest. And this principle can even go beyond normal symmetry. It can also cover anti-symmetry. So if the ball B is negatively charged, so the opposite of charge A, the field created in M by B would be the anti-symmetric by delta of EA. So it would be now the opposite of the previous vector. We can illustrate this principle even beyond the simple example of two balls. So imagine we are given a charged cylinder. This charged cylinder is the cause. The cause of what? Of the presence of some electric field around. To make the situation even more symmetric, I would suppose that the cylinder is uniformly charged. So now we have rotation symmetry and translation symmetry. And this abundance of symmetry is very useful to reduce calculations because now the causes, which are charged cylinder, would have a lot of symmetry elements. For instance, every plan orthogonal to the axis of the cylinder is a symmetry plan. So that if we assume that for point N, this symmetry, the electric field is going this way of the causes imposes that from the other side of the plan the field should look like this but what if m is inside the plan so m if m is inside the plan the field should be included in the plan to be symmetric to itself but as i said any plan orthogonal to the axis is the plan of symmetry so for this two other points we just take the plan including the points which would be again a symmetry plan and then the field would be obliged to be included in the plan. So briefly, field's line should be orthogonal to the axis of the cylinder. Field's line should be the same if we operate the rotation around the axis. This tells us that any field line within the cylindric coordinates would be only dependent on the radial vector er. More interesting is that if we variate the angle theta or the coordinate z, field wouldn't change because of this translation symmetry and rotation symmetry, meaning that e would only depend on r and would be following the direction of er. Thus, there is no need to calculate how E depends on theta or Z, reducing the amount of calculation we have to do to calculate the field. So this small example shows us how the symmetries of the causes can be used to reduce the work to guess how the consequences would be. And this is very useful in physics, particularly in electromagnetism.